What's up, guys? We're back. We are officially back. Weekly podcasts are back. We've been hyping this episode up for a while, and you guys will see why. I'm not going to give it all away yet. You guys will just have to watch the whole thing to see why. But yes, we are back. I'm at college, so I got my whole setup. I got a new improved microphone. I got lighting around me. I got everything. Sean's in a new location, too. Uh, yeah, I'm in a his, room. His lighting is better than mine. I don't, honestly, because I'm crazy bright. Your lighting's probably better than mine. But well, because my I said mine's just natural window light. You got a light on you. Yeah, I got like, I got three lights. One one in the middle yeah. and one left, one right. Yeah, I got a new yeah. microphone. I got a little audio interface. I got everything. Uh, but yeah, we're back. So uh, first things first. How have you been? Been good. I've been very good. I got a kid should be born here over the next two weeks. Yes, sir. So some big Dad, moves going Sean on. Times two. Yep. Oh, also, if you guys haven't noticed, uh, just completely ignoring it, we have a new overlay. It looks a lot better. And a new uh, intro. And a new intro. You guys saw that first. So we have a new intro, new overlay, improved setup for me. I'd say your setup looks improved. Mine's improved. It's just I don't know if this is permanent for me yet. Yeah, it's just it's makeshift, but it's improved. Yep. I got this. I got this crazy mic that um, I had all the stuff sitting around. I just didn't know what to do with it, and my roommate set it up. So that's great. But yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and just start talking how we would normally talk. Um, the XFL. <laughs> the XFL is uh, coming back, and they announced eight cities for their relaunch. They have not given the names of the teams yet. Just the cities. We got Las Vegas. We got Seattle. We got Orlando, St. Louis, San Antonio, Arlington, Houston, and Washington, D.C. That's three Texas teams. Just Arlington, Texas. Well, well, football is like religion there, so they get but, extra special stuff. Of course, Orlando. I, I think the XFL is going to do good, too, because they're actually going to go to different stadiums. The USFL did it all in Birmingham. Yeah. And, of course, Birmingham won the damn thing. Well, that and the XFL is partnered with the NFL. Yep, the XFL clears. That helps. Um, Chris Carson retired. I think I think everybody expected that because he had like some, yeah. some some shit in his neck. Like he had neck yeah. plates. Yeah, it was not good. Bro was not in good health. It's sad because he was actually pretty good when he was healthy. It's just he was always fucking hurt. But... Yeah, injuries caught up with him. Oh, by the way, if you guys couldn't tell. We're just speaking. Fun. Um, yep. <laughs> the Bucks signed Julio Jones. So Tom Brady is throwing to Julio Jones. How are you feeling about that? Well, so Julio Jones has been mid for like, what, three or four years now? It's He's mid because of injuries. It's like he's yeah. always hurt. But people in camp are saying he looks like old Julio, so. He's looking good in camp, I will say. Cause of I course watched... he would look like old Julio with Tom Brady. I know. What are the chances? What are the chances? <laughs> It's sickening. Have you talked? Have you seen him? Do you know anything about that Tom Brady? Because he's a uh, he's been out with personal matters, and people were saying like his last practice, he was looking really upset. I don't know. Some I saw somebody they made the theory that he didn't want to play this season. The only reason he's playing this season is to spite Adam Schefter for ruin for ruining his uh, retirement. <laughs> so he's yep. he's he's pissed that he's having to play right now. So he's like taking a leave so that he's oh. like. I think he thought he was going to be a dolphin this year. Yeah. So now he's like, now he's like, situation. I don't get that. Like, why do you? Tampa Bay has a way better squad. Like, why do you care so much? I mean, maybe he wants to throw to Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. Well, they didn't have. They were going to get Tyreek at that point when he was talking about going over there. I think he was also. I think he's also upset because he was going to get part ownership. I think. Oh he's yeah. Like, he doesn't get tampering, that bro. Tampering. Yes, that that's shit. a that's a perfect. That shit'll kill you. That's a transition right here to uh, the Dolphins. The Dolphins will forfeit a first-round pick in the 2023 draft and a third-round pick in 2024. And Stephen Ross, the do- owner's, owner of the Dolphins, is suspended through October 17, 2022 for tampering with Tom so Brady. what's that first thing they're losing? First-round pick in 2023. Damn, so the Jaguars will pick 31st overall. Got it. So is that how it works? There's just 31 picks now? Yeah. That's weird. That the makes Jaguars the, will pick thirty first. That makes whoever gets the thirty, um, whoever um, gets the first pick, 
it gives them more value with the 33rd pick because it'll be like the 32nd pick. It should it it should just be the 32nd pick. Like all exactly. the numbers might just be off this year. Did that happen pick... in one that happened before, I think. Wasn't it the Patriots who lost their pick? I think the Patriots lost one too. For the Was it for Deflate Gate or Spy Gate or something? So. I think what it was, was the, the two? No, it wasn't Deflate Gate, it was the Spy Gate. Spy Gate, yeah, they lost I think because I, I remember that happening before. Thirty one picks. Tom Brady's been involved with every first pick that's been taken. He's the goat. <laughs> oh my lord, I can't. Yeah, the Dolphins fans. It's funny because I knew a dolphin. I know a Dolphins fan. He was at Dolphins training camp I was when about that to say, happened. You, you knew what I was about to say. What happened? He off himself when he found out they lose all that. <laughs> God, I knew a Dolphins fan once, but he killed himself because they lost their first round pick. <laughs> no, apparently they were happy because Tua looked good. People think Tua is going to be crazy this year because he because he threw that sixty yard bomb in practice. It's like that's not the conversation of arm strength. Arm strength is velocity. Yes, he can throw the ball far. Okay. Menchu is on a different hand. It's just bad arm strength to where he can't even throw the ball far. But yeah, Darth Menchu was coming at me again. <coughs> uh, he blocked me, so I'm good. He blocked me. He was coming at me when I couldn't see him. Like I saw the oh, replies. Really? I saw other people replying to him. Oh, Jesus! Some guy also told me, uh, "How? Di- who am I to talk down on Mister Menchu?" Yeah, I saw that too. I was <laughs> who like, calls Jesus. him Mister <laughs> Mister uh, Menchu? I was like, "There's Josiah. Get in trouble again." <laughs> All because I just say the truth. What Minshew is not good, bro. That's old, Josiah. You you gave up the arguing. Now you're back to it. Yeah, you did. It's funny because I've always been that guy who goes back and forth for no reason. And Sean's like, "What are you doing?" And then Sean does it sometimes too, though. I only do it when it comes to Andrew Wingard. He is protected <laughs> he, by me. Cough, cough. Maybe soon. Maybe something. Somebody. Somebody who, who you had discourse about, Andrew Wingard, will be coming on soon. I'm not going to start nothing. Is he a, is he, he's a free safety, bro. Okay. Sure. It's, it's a typo. Either way. They, 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 whoever they have making the schedule had a typo three times. We're going to cut this part out so he doesn't see it. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> yeah, we are. Okay. <laughs> it's just a joke. Oh, I dropped my phone. <laughs> uh, karma. <laughs> All right, let's get on to Sean Watson. Um, the first thing that happened was the initial decision was the judge gave him six games, which made no sense because in her ruling, she said how egregious it was, but then gave him six games. Then the NFL appealed that, and as of yesterday, Thursday, the new decision, which I believe is final now, is he's being suspended 11 games and he'll be fined five million dollars it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't move me it's probably not enough still but should have been a full year should have been more money it should have been full year indefinite because yeah. the thing is him missing games in his first season is not affecting him monetary wise much because he makes all his money after this year yeah i don't know it's Nasty dumb, league, man. Nasty league. Still less than Calvin Ridley for betting on his team to beat Urban Meyer. Nasty league, man. Nasty Ur- league. Urban Meyer took that man down, and he didn't even do it himself. Wow. Unbelievable. I don't think it should be against the rules to betting yourself to win. I don't either. I understand if it's like you're betting against your team to win, and it's like you're Cause, yeah, cause then you it. could Yeah, then you could actively sabotage. But if you're betting on your team to win... And he wasn't but, even playing. So I'm saying, and he wasn't even playing. Even if you were playing, what's the downside of betting on yourself to win? Like, how is that illegal? There's no like, you know, what I'm saying it's nothing bad happening. Who There's doesn't you want do to make yourself win more? Who doesn't want to bet that Urban Meyer is going to lose? That was a good bet last year. You would exactly. won it 14 times. And and the two times were the ones you did not expect it. We won three times. Oh yeah, we do because we beat Miami too. Miami too. Miami, yeah, the Bills and the Colts. You definitely only should have beat Miami. That's probably it. Yeah, Miami was the only game that you probably that people thought we could win. Yeah, but you know, we play the Colts at home like week two, right? Yep. Get that one out of the way. Got to be two. That'll be a dub. But I digress. Hey, it's my phrase. (laughs) It's been a hot minute since I got to say that. But I digress. Uh, Anyways, next up is Zach Wilson. Uh, People thought he tore his ACL, but he did not. (sighs) He um, 
was it like it was like a bone bruise, right? It's like a yeah, a bone bruise and a torn meniscus, I believe. Yeah, he like re-injured his meniscus. So he's out week one more. It's not official, but he's not gonna play week one. Because they're not playing him him until he's a hundred percent. So I'm glad he's not hurt that bad because I have agendas to push. I know, we both like, like I, hate, I it's it's like I'm torn because I love Zach Wilson coming out of the draft. I thought he was really, really good. A lot of people were, you know, shitting on him or whatever. But Jets fans make me want him to fail sometimes. Just so I they'll know. shut up. It's the same thing with Justin Fields for me. Justin Fields and Zach Wilson, I root on their, I root for their downfall because of their fans. Yeah, I, I do it sometimes, and I catch myself. I'm like, no, I can't because if <laughs> Zach Wilson sucks, there goes my quarterback scouting credibility. I know. I need him to. Fa- I need him to not fail. Damn it! See, it's, it's ingrained in my head. I almost said fail subconsciously because Jets fans piss me off. I know. They're still trying to say he's better than Trevor Lawrence when Trevor Lawrence has looked like an MVP <laughs> quarterback this training camp. Yeah, training camp doesn't matter. I know, but look when you compare them. I have like five or six Zach Wilson football cards. I'm trying to push these out, so we gotta he needs to step it up. <laughs> oh, well, they're, oh they're actually, sick, could, they're sick too, man. You could actually talk about that later on. Yeah. But uh yeah, he's probably gonna miss week one. Joe Flacco's gonna play. Joe Flacco's gonna throw for four touchdowns. He's going to take the starting job, and Zach Wilson's going to be ru- ruled a bust. What happened to Mike White? He was a one-game wonder. Yeah. He wasn't even that good in the one game. It was all yards after catch. I mean, in their situation, you could do a lot worse than going to Joe Flacco in some real relief duty. Yeah, it could be I mean, Mike White. He's not White great. He's, he's not MVP Flacco. Big could be Flacco. Trevor Simeon. They used to have Trevor Simeon. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know. They were saying he looked better than Zach and Cam anyway. I know. Who knows? So, might have been and a blessing Ga- in disguise for them. Garrett Wilson said the difference between Zach Wilson and Joe Flacco is that Joe Flacco throws a receiver-friendly ball. Yep. That was a weird uh, answer. I know. That he kinda, gave. Kind of threw the other Wilson under the bus. I was like, yo, Garrett, relax. The right don't answer cook. was, they're both great quarterbacks. I'm sure either one will produce. Exactly. Don't, don't cook Zach. Well, Joe Flacco is better in every way. <laughs> That's pretty much what he said. Joe Flacco's better in every way. Unbelievable. He, he takes some zip off it one or five yards away. Because he's got no arm left. Zach Wilson just beams us. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. The ne- last thing NFL-wise, just major NFL, is star safety Derwin James and the Chargers are breaking records because they signed a four-year contract worth over $75 million. Okay, so it's an overpay, but it isn't at the same time. So, like, if he stays healthy, then it's worth it. If he gets hurt, it's an overpay. But, I mean, that's you can say that for anybody, but the difference is with him is he's been hurt a lot in his career so far. So you're, you're kind of, uh, like, taking a big risk by paying a guy like that all that money. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, because he was hurt last year. He was great when he played, but he was hurt. Then didn't he's he always hurt? great when he plays. He tore his ACL like the year before that too, right? Yeah, he's always great when he plays. It's just he doesn't hardly play. Him and Jalen Ramsey were on the same team at FSU. And that yeah, that team won a championship. Yep, twenty thirteen. Yep. Pain. They wanted to play together, but obviously that's not going to work out. They both play in LA at least, so they're like around the corner. Yeah. Yeah, so they can circle jerk each other. <laughs> okay, relax, relax. Relax. We still got we still got Ramsey hate over here. Not really. I don't really give a shit about him anymore. I I couldn't care less. I don't root for him, is. but I I I don't think about him that much. Tyson Campbell better. Yes, sir. Tyson Campbell better. Yes, sir. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. All right. So next on the agenda is some fun. We're going to be picking. The JTE Jaguars Twitter Elites Fantasy Draft. We're gonna pick the order live right now. So cool. I hope I get pick one or ten. Is ten people or twelve? It's I think it's actually twelve. Okay, well I hope I get first or last pick. Yep. Uh all right guys. Uh we'll see you guys in about two seconds. We're back. So we have the twelve players in the league. We have myself, Sean, Gordo, Lucas, Mason, Link, Joseph, Gordo's friend, Ty. Crow and Johnny and Jake. I said, 
All right. Sorry, Pick. Godo's friend. I don't know. I don't, we, don't, we don't remember your name. I think it's Makai, but whatever. Oh my god, yeah. All right, make sure right, you, whenever, you, you know, whenever you pick one, you X out of the... Uh... Yep. You up to, You tell the group chat. You can tell the group chat as this happens. Uh, while I, oh, do this. I don't know if I want to do all that, but I guess I will. So we'll have a running list. You I'm just going to create the list. I'm just going to create right. one giant message. All right. Three. Hold on. Time out. Are you going to okay. snake it, or are you going to do straight 1 through 12? Like, are you going to do 1, 12, 2, 11? Let's do a snake. Let's do a snake. That's more fun. Okay. Snake. Let's do snake, then. All right. Tell me when you're ready to go. You left the fantasy football chat. Anyway. I did. Um, that's what I said you did. Anyway, yeah, I'm ready. All right, three, two, one. Pick number one. Who is it going to be? Who is it going to be? Who could it be? Who could it be? Oh, oh no. no. Ah! <laughs> First try. No it's way. It's rigged. They will hide that choice. I thought it was going to be me for a second. It was me or you. Oh, Lord, I need to be next, because the pick is 12. All right, tell me when you're ready. All right, hold on. Okay, uh, I'm ready. All right, three, two, one. Pick number 12. Here we go. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Who's gonna? Who's it going to be? 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 Joseph. Joseph is pick number 12. All right. I got pick number six last year. I was sick to my stomach should be all right three two one pick number two who's it gonna be who's it gonna be here we go oh 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 number two <laughs> we have one and two we have one and two of it's course crazy. they're gonna call it rigged i'll bet money they're we're watching it, it live action right now <laughs> they're gonna call it rigged anyways you guys probably ran it like 17 times until you guys got pick one and two <laughs> all right you ready Yep. Number 11. Here we go. Who's it going to be? I think it's going to be Link. I nope, it's, it's Crow. Be... Don't care. It finishes on your screen way before mine. Yeah, I think sharing screens are a bit lagged. Yeah. All right, Crow, you are pick number 11. All right. You ready? Yep. Three, pick two, three. one. Pick number three. Who's it going to be? Come on, Jake. Give me Mason. Give me Mason. Oh, oh, oh I forgot to hide Crow. Crow. I forgot to hide Crow. It went to him again anyway. <laughs> so we're going to respin that one. All right. Pick number three. Little error by myself. It's not rigged, I promise. Ty. Ty is pick number three. Ty got Jonathan Taylor last year, and that really could. Not this year. All right, three, two, one. He's pick going pick, number pick ten. one to your boy. Pick Spoiler number alert. ten. Taylor's going number one if he doesn't get hurt. <laughs> pick number ten is Link. All righty. Now we're getting into the, the deadly zone. <laughs> this is the zone you do not want to be in. All right, yeah. three, two, one. Pick number four. Oh, is it going to be Jake? Is that who? Oh my goodness, that's Jake. Did you see how close that was? Yeah, to being Gordo. Yeah, you can still see how close it is just without All right. Jake. Pick nine. All right, here we go. Pick number nine. We're getting down to the nitty gritty. Who, who's it going to be? Johnny. Yep, Johnny is pick number nine. Did you see, uh, what's his name? The kicker for the Ravens, Justin Tucker, do the gritty when he came out? Oh of the my home? gosh. <laughs> Dude, kicker gritty. I need to see Evan McPherson do it because he's All literally right. he's on the team with um. Pick Marshalls. five. Pick five. Here we go. Come on, big money, big money. Go. Is that Gordo's friend? Oh, that's Gordo. And this super close one went in in Gordo's favor this time. So Gordo's pick number nine. Yep. All right, pick number six or is it five? This is pick number eight. Oh, that was pick five for uh, Gordo. Oh, okay. I, th I thought it, I said it. I thought it was nine. So pick no, number no. eight. All right, Lucas is gonna be fuming. <laughs> he's yeah. He's like, it's rigged. <laughs> Trust me, buddy. If it was rigged, I'd have helped you out. Gordo's friend is pick number eight. So I'm gonna All right. Gordo's, I'm gonna put Gordo's friend. <laughs> 
<laughs> Pick number six. So this, this this determines six and seven. Whoever gets this gets yep. six, and whoever loses gets six. seven. Ah, damn, these both these picks suck. <laughs> They're not that bad, actually. P picking in the middle isn't bad because you have the same amount of time in between each pick. Mason gets six, Lucas gets seven. Okay. All right. So officially, we have pick... I'll let you read it off since you have the list, actually. Okay, I'm about to send it to them real quick. So pick one is me, pick 12. I'm just going to try to do it in numerical order this time. So pick one is me, pick two is Josiah, pick three is Ty, pick four is Jake, pick five is Gordo, pick six is Mason, pick seven is Lucas, pick eight is Gordo's friend, pick nine is Johnny, pick 10 is Link, pick 11 is Crow, and pick 12 is Joseph. Yep. <laughs> they said, don't cry, don't weep. Don't it weep, is it, it is, is what it is. I, I want to see some reactions before we, before we, <laughs> before we get sent off. I, please, I hope they react quick. All right. Uh, we're going to pause for a second and we'll come back with some JTE reactions. L Luke, Lucas with the first reaction, seven, are you shitting me? <laughs> not that bad, man. It okay, it's not that down. bad, man. Johnny said red. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I want to recount. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want to recount. Okay, Trump. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it came down to Mason and Lucas. And Mason, what do you think is worse? Six or seven? Which would you rather have? Uh, I'd rather have six, I think, just because it's the same, like, between each time, it's the same amount of picks, pretty much. Like, it's just twelve, you know. Yeah. Like being one sucks. Like I pick one, and, and I don't, you pick, don't pick again like until twenty-five. Picks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's better. I wanted pick twelve. Did you get I the love... back? You get the double dip. What I always did is, my first like two years playing, I got the last one of the last picks each time. I'd take Travis Kelsey and then like a running back or a receiver, and I I would win all the time. All right. I don't think we're going to get... Are we, are we ready for our guest to join us? We can just text them and say, if you're ready, we're ready. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys. So I'll let you do that. But So we actually have two guests today, guys. Um, oh, wait. Uh, our first guest is Deshaun Dixon. He's returning. No, to... our first guest is DeLugo. Jordan is at 4.30. Oh, never mind. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, we ha we're having Jordan DeLugo and Deshaun Dixon on the pod. Uh, Deshaun Dixon is a returning guest, and Jordan is soon. But yeah, we'll see you guys right there. All right, we are here with Norfolk's own Deshaun Dixon. What's going on, Deshaun? What's up? What's up? Now he's Jaguar's own. Now he's Duval's own. Yeah. Yes, sir. How is uh so how how have things been since since we last spoke? It's been a few months. You actually ended up getting drafted by the team that well, we podcast for. Well, not drafted, but you know what I'm saying. Like he got signed on. Yeah. But should have been drafted. We'll, we'll leave it at that. He's better than some guys who got drafted. So. Facts. Okay. So how's everything been in since in the months since you uh last spoke? It's been it's been pretty good. You know, this whole thing's just been a learning uh process. Really, just been taking it. Day by day, you know, learning from the best, even learning from some of the rookies too. Um, just kind of, just kind of carrying myself as a professional now. So, yeah. You mentioned you mentioned learning from other rookies and other players. Who's been the biggest help adjusting to the pros? Like, what player have you looked up to the most? Have you grabbed like attached yourself to the most? Like Josh Allen, Trayvon, anybody? Right, probably, probably those two right there, Josh and Trayvon. Uh, uh Vaughn as well. Um, those guys have, you know, they, even though they were, even though they were like, you know, a higher drafted guys, you know, you know, cause we, we got two different pr perspectives on things, but, um, all in all, you know, we just want to, we just want to win. Like we just want to get better every day and, you know, just learning how to, how to carry myself, um, how to carry myself around the team, how to be in practice, you know, just really, you know, just still being myself though, but, but take it as a professional. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Josh Allen's been around here for the for the darkest times of of the Jaguars franchise, so I'm sure he's chomping at the bit to get the mm -hmm. season kicked off and you can get everything rolling. But uh, I didn't I did notice every time we saw like a training camp video, 
I see Josh Allen, and then right beside him, I see 47. And I'm like, and he's to the hip. Fuck to the hip. Airtime, but you look, you're looking good, man. Uh, your first preseason game was the, was the Hall of Fame game. Uh, right. I believe you got a stack, right? Yes, sir. They, they didn't give it to me, but they, they gave they, it to Antoine, right? They didn't credit it to you, but I watched that play. Yeah, good band. Like everything. 10 times, <laughs> and you got there first. I mean, I was, we got him down. That's that's all that matters. That's, that's all that matters. I know, but it's nice to get credited with with the sack, though. But uh, man, then, I remember when that, when that happened, we were so hyped. <laughs> yeah, and then in your second game, I don't think you got a sack, but you got like an eighty-seven PFF grade, which I know a lot of players don't care about PFF. We don't either, but still, it's nice to see get recognition that way. Yeah. Mm. No, I I never like I never like kept up with like PFF or anything like that, but. Um, you know, just just doing my assignment, try to try to make plays on the opportunities that I do get. So, what That's was your favorite you moment? What was your favorite moment in the preseason so far? Um, really, really coming out to just just coming out with the whole team, like you know, with the smoke. Uh, I think it was fireworks or something like that, like the crowd cheering and stuff. That was <laughs> that was probably that was probably my favorite one. That I think that's when it hit me. Like, yeah, I got like a video. You're running out of the tunnel. <laughs> no, nah, I was, I was really, I was really excited. Um, that was my first time in like experiencing something like that. Um, so yeah, I, that was probably my favorite moment so far. Has it just been like extremely surreal to you to realize like, hey, I'm actually in the NFL right now? Uh, it be it be times where like, I guess like when 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 you know when the camera's out and stuff, and you know they got yeah. You got people taking pictures from like every angle, like especially like mm-hmm. like last week when we played the Browns. You know they got they got cameras everywhere. They taking pictures. You know, like I, I'm I'm just walking out. You know, just, you know, right. get my badge checked and stuff. You know, they they flicking <laughs> pics. So yeah, it, it, it's moments. <laughs> I bet. All right, um, who's the funniest guy in the locker room? Funniest guy. I might have to go. Probably Arden Key. Uh, he, he's, Key, yeah. He's 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 a character. He's I mean he's he's been <laughs> around for a while. He's, he he knows a lot of people. He 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 knows he knows a lot of stuff. So, but he he definitely he definitely probably is the funniest guy in the locker room. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, got any more questions? Just I'm still trying to do mine organically. You got any funnier, to funnier, fun training camp stories? Um. Fun training camp. Uh, I mean, the you know the the rookie singings have been have been pretty interesting. It, <laughs> What'd you sing? What'd you sing? I did. I did love by Music Soul Child. That's that's what I did. Okay. okay. Uh, it, I, it was all right. I was nervous up there, but <laughs> it's, it's, some, it's it's some guys who, who definitely showing out. It's some guys that. You know, might need a little practice or something, but no, nah, that's <laughs> who is who is the best and who is the worst. If you can give the worst, of course. The best would probably have to be either Grant Morgan or or Izzy. Izzy had a Izzy had a good before, like knowing knowing Izzy like personality, um, like he's quiet, don't really talk much, and him, you know, performing. Uh, what did he, what did he do? It was something about Bruno Mars, but like he he put on a he put on a show right there. And then Grants Grants was just I guess it really shocked everybody because he he got some vocals he got some vocals on. Him. Oh yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> I know. I remember they interviewed uh, Trayvon at the press conference and they asked him what what he's saying. I can't remember what he said. And they asked him to do it. He was like, "I'm not going to do that." <laughs> oh, nah, he he started he started. It off with a, with a bad performance, you know. And we, wanted, <laughs> we wanted him to go back up there again, but he, he wasn't trying to. I don't. I, I, it don't. He don't. It don't seem like that's his. That's his cup of tea. <laughs> nah. You remember uh, what he said? What he tried to sing though? I think it was. Uh, I think it was a little baby song or a young thug song. I can't. <laughs> I can't remember it. It was just. It was bad. It didn't even go that long. <laughs> oh, not a good look for the number one overall pick. <laughs> well, you that's know what we got. Style. You know they got a rapper on the team. You know Shabari Davis. I heard he's a rapper now. Yeah, he uh, he dropped some stuff before, but um, uh, yeah, we heard his yeah. one of his one of his newer joints, man. That's actually some heat. I'm not gonna lie. 
Yeah, he's 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 uh he's a man of many things. He he does a lot. Yeah, we had him on the podcast too. Mm-hmm. That, that was pretty cool to see you and him both go on that team. Yeah, nah, he's, he's he's I, I like Shabar. He he's uh he's a he's definitely a high energy guy. Yeah, uh, I'm not in the same room with him, but but you know when uh when I do see him, you know he's it's always smiling, always bring the energy. Yeah, he's right. he seemed like a really really cool dude when we had yeah. him on. All right, I got two questions left. This one is just a simple one. In one-on-ones, uh, whatever it is, who's the toughest offensive lineman you've gone against on the team? All right, Cam. Cam Robinson. Okay. Yeah, that uh, makes sense. I want to get some, I want to say twice, either once or twice. And, and, and both of those times, it's just like, you know, he, he he's he's definitely shown like he's, he's the best offensive lineman out there. He's... He's a big guy, strong, got long arms, and then you know he likes to play games. Like he, like it's not, it's not like it's, it's kind of hard to get a read on him. But even right. even so, like watching film and stuff, I mean, you know, it's not a, it's not a lot of times with him. So he, he's gonna have a, he's good, he's definitely the best lineman I've seen. Well, I've gone against. Yeah, he's right. he's been having he's been having a really yeah. good camp. And he got uh, paid. According to, got yeah, the all, yeah, all Jags mm-hmm. media has been reporting he's been having a hell of a camp. So that's that's really encouraging to see that on that side of the ball. Mm-hmm. All right, this is the question I think everybody's been waiting for. Every anybody who's followed uh, NFL around for a while will understand where this question's coming from. But uh, which teammate would you least likely let date your sister? <laughs> uh. And why? That's tough. Um, They're all upstanding gentlemen. Yeah, <laughs> Stephon, nah, Diggs, every, Stephon Diggs got cooked. <laughs> every, everybody's everybody's uh, everybody's pretty good guys. Uh, it's probably I can't really I can't really think of anybody honestly. I mean, <laughs> it's, Top you know, out. I, I, have, no, I have to I have to like really like get to know these guys more. Until I until I put you know put some names out, right? That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. But all right, man. Thanks for coming on again. It was great to check. Great to check in on you. You got a big game tomorrow, uh, Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're uh, uh, looking forward to seeing you get out there, man. And uh, we're still rooting for you. We're hoping that you know you make it all the way. If I can get that jersey, I got to be rocking that forty-seven. You know yeah, <laughs> if I do, I'll hang it right there. Yeah, appreciate. No, I appreciate it. Appreciate it, guys. Yes, sir. Yeah, no problem, yep. man. Good luck tomorrow. All right. Yeah, good luck, Thank man. You. Yep, have a good one. All right. See you. All right. All right, guys, we're back. So hope you guys enjoyed that interview with Deshaun Dixon. It's great to have him back on the podcast. But yes, sir. we're not done. Like I said, we have two guests. And as we said already, Jordan DeLugo is the second one. So we're going to go ahead and send you guys straight into that interview with Jordan DeLugo right now. See you guys there. All right, guys, we're back. And now for our second guest of the episode, we have Mr. Jen Jag himself, Jordan DeLugo. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. Happy it's Friday. Happy there's some some Jags preseason football tomorrow. Happy that we're going to see some starters. You ready to see George Pickens cook us? Hmm? You ready to see George Pickens cook us? Yeah, I'm ready to see Tyson Campbell versus George Pickens, Georgia versus Georgia. That That's Get a generational matchup. <laughs> I don't I'm know huge, about that quite. I'm a, I'm a huge George. <laughs> I, I'm exaggerating, but I'm a huge George Pickens guy. So yeah, yeah, I am too. I had him as a first rounder when it was all said and done. So I had him as a Tyson first Campbell, rounder. Tyson Campbell gonna Tyson Campbell gonna clamp. I we'll had him see. as a first rounder for too long. <laughs> I hope so. Campbell's yeah. development since stepping on the field for the first time in Jacksonville from then to now, one of the more impressive, you know, growth you know, gross that I've seen since covering so the Jaguars or even so just since initially. like being a fan of the Jaguars as a younger kid. Um, yeah, that growth, because I really wasn't a fan of him in the draft process throughout the draft process. Thought that 33 was rich, but uh, I think he's making me bite my words there is what it looks like. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, much the same for me because yeah. I, I wasn't a fan of him either because I – as a Florida fan, I watched him. It, I watched it happen with Kyle Pitts, Javon Grimes, all those guys. He did not turn for the football. He didn't do it in high school. He didn't do it at all at college. And then he didn't do it for his first half the season 
in the NFL, and then suddenly, I can't. I can't. Yeah, it's it's, I can't it's snap. crazy. It's it's, it's, the, it's crazy the switch that just flipped for him because, yeah, like you said, the growth from week one to even like the end of the season it was astronomical. It was like a totally different player. Mm-hmm. Now I will say there was times in training camp where he looked damn good. It seemed to go away uh, once they tried to stick him inside a little bit and and all that, but. He turned it on, and credit to Joe Cullen for kind of playing into more of his strengths down the stretch. I think that was a big part of it, but it was pretty awesome to see. Yep. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about, first things first, uh, the Browns preseason game. Who was, in your opinion, the standout player in that game? Standout player. You know, uh, I went back and I was watching Ben Barch and Tyler Shatley today. Oh, and yeah. uh, Ben Barch looked incredible um, playing against some of the same players that Shatley was lining up against. They didn't have their starters in on the defensive front. So Barch was going against the same exact guys and it looked like just night and day talent level. Like I respect Tyler Shatley, been in the league forever, been a good Jaguar, been versatile, reliable, all that good stuff, but he's limited athletically bottom line and Ben Barch is not uh in any way especially at the guard position you know he played tackle in college at St. John's College but uh he just looks the part and I'm excited to see if he gets in the starting lineup this week uh how he performs against you should see some talented players up front for Pittsburgh Mike Tomlin talked about it uh if you're healthy you're playing this week so I'm really excited to see that I thought he played really good ball um, I mean, looking at Trevor Lawrence, I thought he stood out, uh, in a positive way. Zay Jones stood out in a positive way. That's Sean, Sean's yeah. guy, that's Zay my, Jones. That's my guy. <laughs> yeah. Trayvon and Josh Allen were getting after it. I look, I will say where Robertson, Harris and Devon Hamilton really struggled week one or preseason week zero, I guess you would call it hall of fame game. Right. Preseason week one against the Browns, they they and then getting fully fought to Kasi in there as well. And of course, Foya Luke and at linebacker. But uh, that run defense was night and day. And yeah, that was against a lot yards. of starters for the Browns uh, on the offensive line. And uh, also, you know, Darius Johnson, he's no slouch at running back. Right. You know, most teams yeah. third running back is not as talented as Darius Johnson. Right. Rayshon, how do you feel about Rayshon? Oh, sorry to cut you off. Uh, I was gonna say, going back to uh, Ben Barch real quick. Uh, I like him. I was talking to Josiah about this earlier. I like him better at guard than Shally purely because of his size. He matches up better to the length of a three tech versus Shally, who's kind of I think he's only like he's not as big or as no. lengthy as as Barch and Shally. His size, he projects better as a center to me than a guard. He looks like a center. Yeah, he should be a you center. You look at him, he looks like a center. I agree yeah. with you 100%. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. I was like, Ben Barch being like, I think he's 6'6", six, six, I believe, right? Uh, yeah, six, he's six. a taller guy. I mean, he he's has yeah. tackle size. Yeah, his and, I mean, just... Luke Fortner is taller too, but, you know, mm-hmm. he's he's getting it done at center. So Yeah, so I think Shadley will, will serve best as an interior swing guy for us and mentoring Luke Fortner best he can. That's always been his best role, right? You know, get yeah. in if he needs to, but you don't want him to be in the starting lineup necessarily. Yeah, I was a firm believer that he could have started first at center and he could have moved Linder over to right guard where he was drafted at and probably had a better O-line than you had had. But yeah. it's not bad to have him come in, you know, if he has to come in for four or five games here and there to fill in yeah. for an injury. I'm with you there. I think just Ben Barch's ceiling is much higher and it looked like at least last week, that he didn't have any issues with like communication or, or understanding his assignment. Um, he, he just looked really good. It was, it was and you'd like, you'd, you also, uh, for the coaching staff, you'd like to see what you have there with him also. Like you would, I would, if it's, if it's close between him and Shiley, I personally, so far it hasn't been to me. I think Barch is, is playing or is looking better, but if it's close, you got to go with the young guy to see what you have for the future. Same, same could be said for the right tackle spot as well, in my opinion. Yeah, I would agree with you, especially at right tackle, and we can talk about that. But at, at guard, it's a little different because it's a lower value position just money-wise. Mm-hmm. And they are both have expiring contracts following the 2023 season. 
Um, but having said that, Barch is younger. He has more yeah. upside. So I completely agree with you on that front. Um, right. And then at, at right tackle, yeah, I don't know how – even if Jawan was playing a little bit better than Walker right now, I don't Which know how you go ha- That hasn't been the case uh, from all accounts. I wouldn't say. It's either – I've heard Walker's doing better or it's even at, at best. Right. I, that's what I'm saying, though. Even if Jawan was right. playing better than Walker – I don't know how you go with Jawan simply with the the roster construction and management portion of it, you know, with with Walker Little under contract for, you know, this season and two seasons after, and Jawan going into the final year of his deal, uh, and just seeing what he's done throughout his career, the book's kind of been written on him fairly or unfairly based on his circumstances. They haven't been the best, but uh, yeah, I, I would. I don't know how you go with Jawan over Walker Little, and I don't think they will. I don't ultimately. think so either. I just, I don't, I don't think I'll ever understand how Jawan didn't pan out. Like he was, <laughs> he was pretty good his rookie year. He played all. I don't snaps. know if y'all, y'all watched what he did on on last Friday, but he looked damn good. Yeah, I've been. Uh, yeah, yeah, he did. At the point of attack in the run game, him and Walker are both very good. Um, and pass protection, they were both dominating. And again, that wasn't against superstars, so right. you know you have to factor that in. Uh, I did, I did think both of them struggled working to the second level a little bit, um, trying to frame up those blocks against the smaller players like linebackers and safeties. Mm-hmm. So I, I would like to see them both improve in that area this week. But um, overall, I mean, the name of the game is protecting the passer and and creating push up front, and they both did that. Do you think the competition is? possibly lighting a flame under him to try to perform a little better. Absolutely. And it, 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 it's getting the best out of both players, in my opinion. They're both That's... fighting for the job. They both want the job. And I don't think Jawan has backed down, which is right. certainly encouraging. Um, uh, he has not backed down at all. And I think Friday night was some of the best football I've seen him play. That's a, that's a fair take. I would agree. Yeah, yeah he, was, he looked pretty good. It's still sad though, because obviously I'm a Gators fan. So, yeah, I am too. So I'm with. I feel for you. I, I feel. I feel you. For I feel sure, nothing. it's always tough. <laughs> I, feel nothing. I feel nothing. I'm a Michigan <laughs> fan, and we don't have nobody really. We have Brandon Rusnick. <laughs> yeah, and you know that's a guy who I've always liked. He's been around for a few years now. I like um, him too. I just I like him better as like a special teams guy than yeah. So don't, and I I don't, I don't think like, he'll make the roster, yeah, but I don't think he will either. Uh, you, 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 you want to ask about Rayshon? Uh, I was going to, yeah, I guess we can go back to Rayshon. Rayshon looked a lot improved. And apparently, hasn't he been like one of the better players in training camp this season or this year? He has. It's really, I will say, he did not look bad at all in training camp last year. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, he looked pretty good last year and he was a vocal leader last year. He was voted a, a team captain last year. Right. Um, so you saw all the stuff for the most part, last training camp that you have seen this training camp from him, the surprise just kind of comes because last year was so, so bad from a mental standpoint for him, just making all those mental mistakes, racking up the penalties and, um, you know, just not looking great. But guess what? Most players did not look great in Jacksonville last year. Um, So I'm, I'm going into this season with a, you know, an optimistic outlook on Rayshon Jenkins. I think when you look at what he did in San Diego and Los Angeles for the Chargers, uh, serving in multiple different roles for them, and, and the renewed um, the renewed mindset and, and just optimistic view on things that he's had since Doug Peterson has come in and the new regime has taken over and, and how he has played on the practice field. Uh, he's had three would be interceptions, I believe. So, mm-hmm. and those are against the ones. Um, he's playing good football. So, yeah, that'll be definitely something to monitor because most people look at him as the weak link in the secondary. If your weak link is playing at the level he's shown so far, you're in a pretty damn good situation. Yeah, yes. a lot of people were, re- were ready to write him off after last year, but I am giving everybody a pass for last year. Everybody gets a play pass, clean slate. Last year didn't happen. I don't know what happened. What happened last year? Nothing. Yep. I'm Nothing with happened. you. I, 
<laughs> and there are certain situations that I think are within players' control. There are certain situations that are out of players' control. Uh, a lot of the situations and a lot of the poor play last year, I think, was out of the players' control for many of, many of them. We've got Murray trying to check in here. She's going crazy. Hi. Hi. Howdy. (laughs) Trying to give the kisses there. Some dog love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember a lot of people didn't like the Rayshon signing initially, but Sean and I did. And then he had the lackluster year, but everybody did. Last year only exists for me because I own an Urban Meyer bag. Oh, no. Yeah, I own it because some my my cousin. I've told the story before. I don't know if you've heard it, but my cousin helped Urban Meyer move out of his house when he got fired. <laughs> yes, and I so Ur- that. so Urban just gate said, "Take this stuff." So I got so it. So we've been talking for almost fifteen minutes, and we have not brought up Dewey Wingard. I was gonna, I was gonna let it, let it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my guy, man. Let's go. Let's see yeah. how it goes. He well, had. I mean, He had a solid game against the Browns, um, has had a solid, really good week. So maybe he can stack that up with another good game against the Steelers. He had a really good Hall of Fame game, too. Yeah, so he's he's playing some good football right now. Got to give him some props. Now, the strong safety, free safety. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) So he is, as you showed me, he is listed as a strong safety on the depth chart. He has never been listed as a strong safety prior to this year. It's weird because Daniel Thomas has always been strong safety, Dewey, uh, free safety. It does look like they are rolling with some of those looks like how the depth chart indicates with Andrew Wingard actually lining up as a strong safety. And you mentioned you like his skill set there. I just, I have had so many issues with Dewey because going back to his rookie year, it was also Josh Oliver's rookie year. Such an unnecessary play to try to dive at someone's ankles after they burned you in one-on-ones. And, of course, that leads to, like, a terrible injury. And Josh Oliver never gets to see the light of day in Jacksonville. Didn't Josh Oliver break his foot? uh, No football? It was like a non That was the next season. Oh, that was the next season. That was the next season, yeah. Yeah. Can't blame And then, so, like, his first two seasons were a complete wash. Um, But... Beyond that, like just last year, trying to see him trying to not tackle Derrick Henry and Jonathan Taylor, which I can't blame him, but I'm not getting paid millions of dollars. Right, to to right. Um, I see. Here's everything that happened. I created this Darth Wingard persona just to like troll Jacks fans because they like they just shit on the guy for like anything. The dude could sneeze, and they'd be like, "You didn't sneeze right, bro." And like, it's just anything. So I created that just to like as a joke. But, like, I actually do like him, but I never wanted him to be a starter. Yeah. Like, when that happened, my God, I was trolling (laughs) hardcore. I always thought he should be a backup guy who could come in, you know, three or four games here and play decent enough. Special teams, he does really good on special teams. But I like – the only reason why I like him better as a strong safety is because I like the way he plays at the line of scrimmage and behind it. I don't like – when he's getting ran at full speed by a <laughs> big running back. And he has, yeah. he's not a very big guy. No, he's not. He's not a great athlete either. So. Yeah, he's not. That's another reason why I didn't like him as a free safety. He's not exceptionally rangy at all. Right. I like him. I think he pursues, he pursues well. It's just his finishing could use some help. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's not a he, big, strong, fast guy. But no, he's a yeah, glue he's, guy on a team, and I think you do have to give him credit for that. I'm with you. Yeah, there. I just think he's the most – overhated player i can remember in a long time in jacksonville totally fair it does not help though when you get those highlights of just derrick henry no. running right hi- through him what about those highlights of him picking off philip rivers beautiful <laughs> and i mean our, our people, only w that year Thank people you. People act like people <laughs> act like he's not worth a roster spot but yeah, realistically that's what, that's, that's he's what, a solid backup and he's yeah. good on special teams people act like he's the worst player in the entire league yeah that's what killed yeah. me for me at this point, I would I would say he's probably the fourth or fifth best safety on the team. I think I think Daniel Thomas is more talented personally. 
I also think Rudy Ford is more talented on special teams and on defense. But I'm slightly biased against Rudy Ford because of that Jets game when he just completely let up and did not tackle Zach Wilson when yeah, he could have that was bad. he could have slammed Zach Wilson and he just I think pulled the entire up. defense had a shot at him on that play, right? I know Chase yeah, on did. Chase on had poor effort. Rudy Ford could have literally lit him up but didn't. <laughs> yeah. Andrew Wingard missed his tackle, but I think he got pushed in the back. But either way, he did. He got pushed uh, in the back. Smoot, Everybody blamed him for it. Smoot missed the sack at the beginning. I think it was Smoot. Yeah, it was just terrible play. Terrible play. But Trevor was a better know. passer that game. Yeah, and that's not how people remember it either. They just I know, remember people, the runs. Zach Wilson had like four dropped interceptions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would personally have Dewey as the third best safety on the team. And where he's getting played at in preseason tells me that I think that the Doug feels the same way. The coaches agree with you. <laughs> yeah. There's no yeah. question about that. And the coaches he, last year thought that he was maybe no, the best safety, no, second best safety. No, that was, that was some personal vendetta that Urban Meyer had against Cisco. I don't know about that. Dumbass. That's Andre some Cisco, personal vendetta Andre, that he had. Andre Cisco and Tyson Campbell both look so good every time they're on the field. When I saw Rayshon and Dewey as the starters back there, I was like, we're going to get cooked. Those are not you, rangy guys. You better than Josh Jones. Uh, yes. Oh. yes. <laughs> he's, he's actually supposed to be a rangy guy. He runs fast. <laughs> yeah, Jones he's is an stiff. athlete. He's just stiff. Yeah. He's stiff. Yeah. Now that we got the Dewey stuff out of the way, we can move on. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, let's talk about let's talk about Malcolm Brown. Uh, he got cut. He did. So he was he was but, the backup nose until he got cut, but. So uh, Prisco, Prisco and Baselli kind of foreshadowed that on uh, Jaguars Happy Hour. They were like, he was playing into the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. And I went back and looked at it, and I was like, holy shit, he was playing into the fourth quarter. That's not a good look. <laughs> it was weird. Like, he got in there with the second team, but then Jay right. Tufele took a bunch of reps um, a little bit Two after Two plays. Stand yeah. up. <laughs> and then Brown went back, back in later. Right. Uh, I was, that was kind of weird, but um, – Yeah, I think part of it is obviously Devon Hamilton's ascension. Um, Part of it is J2 Fele playing really well against the run over the preseason. Um, And then maybe you wanted to save $3 million and bring in someone that's a veteran that you feel like can do something more for you. Um, Maybe they'll do that. Yeah, Suval soon, right? Soon. Yeah, I saw that. That was a good one, too, the soon. (laughs) Suval coming soon. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, I don't think he will. Know, I don't. I don't think he will. Just, he's a big time personality. Um, that and, and not, he's probably he's probably gonna want a ring. Go somewhere to get a yeah. ring. Not here. I agree with you. Um, there's a couple other guys out there that might make sense, but Brandon Williams. Um, yeah, even if it's just Devon and and J two Fele, I think you can feel pretty good about that. Yeah, because Roy Robertson Harris he can play inside. Arden Key can play inside. Dwan oh, yeah. Smith Foley can play can inside. Too. Foley they could put can Foley play either spot if they need to. Yeah, I don't think they want to, but yeah. I mean, that he did he a lot of that in New York, and he did it at a yeah. high level, but they just like him in this new role that they've kind of uh, put him in at, at defensive end, and they think he can be really stout and push the pocket. So, Speaking of Devon Hamilton, he is destroying everybody. In He's the Aaron Donald 2.0. Let's go. <laughs> and the one-on-ones at least. Yeah. And, and, and camp and the one-on-ones. In the game too. Him. He injured that center, bent yeah. him over backwards. Yeah. I don't dude. <laughs> That's a strong guy. <laughs> yeah. My draft priors are looking good on that one right now. I had him as an early second round grade. They got him in the third round. I was pretty stoked about that. That was like the first time since I started covering the draft, which was like 2018, um, where I was like super high on a guy. And then the Jaguars actually went and made the move to get him. I was super right. stoked on it at the yeah, that- time. Um, and he he came on a little bit during his rookie year, but then he had the knee injury last year. Again, didn't see a lot of development akin to most people on the team. Uh, right. But this this preseason and training camp, he hasn't been perfect. And he was not perfect in preseason week one, but I think he's got a fire lit under him right now. And he's a big, strong man like that. He dominated during his final season at Ohio state. You're kind of seeing some of that now. Yeah. Going back to your guys. And like, I put out a, my guys list on Twitter before the draft and I had Chad Mumo on there. And yeah, uh, I'm, I'm man, with you. We, when we got him, I was like, well, I told, I said, if we draft any of my guys, I'm buying that Jersey. So I got to give you a Chad Mumo Jersey now. 
No, my, my... This was the most my guy draft of any draft the Jaguars have had, and it, it did not start at number one. Uh, right. I think Devin all Lloyd, of us have Devin talked Lloyd. about that. But Devin Lloyd, um, yeah, I know Luke you're Thorner. high on him. You're twelve, twelve, you're 12 overall. I like player, Trayvon right? here more than anyone uh, in this yeah. call. I was a yeah, Trayvon well, guy, but... and the thing about Trayvon is, I, in my write up on him, I said this could be the best player in this draft class. It's just hard for me to say that without seeing what he's going to do at the next level, where I he's going to be deployed at the next level. I had him over. Pressure. I had him over Kayvon. I had him one spot ahead of Kayvon. Yeah, I, I had him behind specifically. If you're talking about edge, I, it was tough. I like Kayvon Thibodeau. You know, I liked Trayvon Walker. It's, that's one of those things about the draft where everyone's like, "You have Trayvon Walker with only a first round grade. You don't like him." It's like I have a first round grade on him. You like him? I like him <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, but anyway, I mean, yeah, Devin Lloyd was my twelfth overall player. Chad Muma, I know, was thirty two. And of course, Ooh. that's an early second. And then I had Luke Fortner as like a late second. So I was really stoked with all those picks. Right. Everybody knows I was a big Aiden Hutchinson guy. So whenever we took Trayvon, I shed two tears, wiped him away, and got over it like an adult. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Aiden, uh, Aiden's going to be a stud too. So I think he's yeah, going to be but... my defensive rookie of the year pick, probably. It's a good pick, it's an easy pick. My offensive rookie of the year pick is going to be the one that brings me so much pain, George Pickens. Uh, I literally very good transition. I refuse. I refuse to let anyone say they were on the George Pickens train unless they're a Georgia fan. If you're a Georgia fan, fine, fine, you can take it. But I've been a George Pickens fan for so long. During the draft, when we took Devin Lloyd, there's a video of me on YouTube doing it. I was saying Devin Lloyd, George Pickens, Devin Lloyd, George Pickens, Devin Lloyd, George Pickens. Love it. And they, they, got, they took one of them. <laughs> and I think a lot of people said he was probably taken off the Jags board because of the maturity concerns. My thing was he's 20. I think he'll get past that. I'm not well, and too the concerned. one thing you do love to see with him, he is super competitive. Very. So like he works his ass off. I mean, the fact that he was able to get back from so his quickly. ACL, right? To get back and play during At last season level. was incredible. And then to run what the four what was four it? four the four four less than a year after that I, he's he was, gonna bust his ass in this in the uh, national championship he had that diving catch yeah bro he tore his ACL in spring he also incredible Dax, Dax Hill on his ass he does that to everybody corners are gonna <laughs> yeah, absolutely hate this guy oh yeah I just hope that you know Shaq or Tyson doesn't end up uh, being one of those highlights right no, he better not they better not they're, I mean they're I mean if he beats corners, them so if he beats don't. them over the top you know whatever but I don't want them to get pancaked by by a right. rookie Tyson better expect right. it because he played against him he knows George yeah <laughs> like, so the only thing I hate about George Pickens is after draft now is every time that Chad Boom is mentioned everyone's always like should have drafted George Pickens oh, yeah we, like, it, we'd have to trade there. up to do that he wasn't there yeah that was a trade up situation though. That's yeah they're, not like, oh, even you a... they're like oh you could have traded up for him I'm like you think it's that easy just call around anybody will just give you a pick like and now people I mean, are getting like, upset because Devin Lloyd's been hurt so and now they're seeing George yeah. Pickens and I'm like I uh, think they're both great so yeah I'm seeing people oh. like you know the rip Devin, Devin Lloyd's uh <laughs> Devin Lloyd's an injury um He's always injured. It's like, dude, he had one hamstring. Right. It's preseason. It's preseason. Yeah. They're Come taking on. it easy. He's taking it. But, they're taking it easy. And Chad Mooma's filled in fine. And yeah, Mooma's going to be a good football player for a long time in the NFL. The That's one thing is, I think where you can be critical or question what the Jaguars did this offseason is how heavily they invested in an off ball linebacker. I mean, just. You know, fifteen million dollars per year for Foye Luke and trading up and, and using a first round pick on an off ball linebacker. And then going back in the third round and doing it again. They better I, stop I a screen. The, what'd you say? They better stop a screen. Oh, they damn well better be able to stop screens. Cover a tight uh, end for the first time in twenty years. Right. And I love all the players they brought in. I wouldn't have paid Foye that much, but I do think he's a really good addition to the team. I, I think he'll be here for two years and then that'll be probably it. Well, Chad, after I think Chad drafting Mooma Chad Mooma in the third round, how do you yeah. keep all three for more saying, than two I think, years? It's just saying you'll keep him for two years, probably let him they'll probably release him for cap reasons, and then you got your starting starting linebackers for the next decade. I agree with you there. 
Uh, but you're always going to have to look back at this off season and, uh, and if it doesn't go well this year for the receivers, you're going to easy I criticism. I easy criticism. We, we had Alec Pierce right there. We had Khalil Shakir late, yeah. late. And yeah. I was like, dude, please. He balled out in that preseason game with the Bills. I was like, oh, my God, man. <laughs> yeah, and I know people aren't. Uh, you could have traded up for Sky Moore, too. Yeah, Sky and Moore's look good, too. He is. The thing about Sky Moore is he did play small school, right, Western Michigan. Um, but they did play some big teams. He, yeah, they he played Michigan. the Pittsburgh corner. Yeah. Um, he's small, but he beats press. So, like, he's not a slot only. Like, he can win on the right. outside, on the line of scrimmage His against releases. NFL receivers, and you're seeing that already. So, um, I, I like all the players they brought in. I'm very curious to see, you know, how it all how it all shakes out and how we look back at this in a year. Yeah, I think the casual fan probably just looked at Sky Moore and saw 5'10", 5'11", and was like, oh, that's not an X receiver. Yeah. Like, they just I completely wrote him off. Yeah. He, he could be. He very well could be. All right. He ain't no Zay Jones, though. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> all right, we got two left. First one is... Do you th- what do you think? Uh, we're, how do you think we're going to do week one? Chase Young's going to miss the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think is going to happen? I think they're going to beat the Commanders. Um, the commies. Yeah, I know. I heard that today. <laughs> that someone's like, what, "What's the, what? What do you? How do you abbreviate Commanders? What do you call them? The commies. The commies. The commies. <laughs> God. <laughs> the Washington D.C. Commies. <laughs> it's a terrible name. Hilarious. It fits. It fits, but it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i think they're gonna beat the commanders um doug peterson is familiar with ron rivera uh, i think ron rivera is a conservative coach um i think that having no chase young obviously helps you a lot i still think the defensive line for for the commanders presents a lot of problems yes i like their roster as a whole yes um i, I think they have a talented roster overall but the bottom line is if you're – if after what you've seen over the last three years, two years, whatever, you're going to go and, and make Carson Wentz your priority of the offseason. That was, yeah, no way. And how much they spent on him when you look at all, the value of all the other quarterbacks that got moved and the, they sent like two-thirds, a second and a third or something for Carson Wentz? Crazy. He's been, he got, terrible. He's been terrible in camp. And Carson, Carson Wentz had his job locked up in Indy until – he came to Jacksonville, and then he basically got kicked off the team. Yeah. Like, I yeah, if they make the playoffs, he's still. If they make the playoffs, he's still the quarterback in Indy this year. Yeah, and I think Frank Reich deserves so much credit um, for pulling all that out of him last year. Uh, unbelievable, but and Frank Reich's done that with pretty much every quarterback he's had. Um, really good quarterback coach, but. I think it could be close, but I'm taking the Jaguars in that one. And it's not, I'm not, I don't think the Jaguars are a playoff team this year. I'm not predicting them to make the playoffs. I do think they could make the playoffs. Like, I think it's, I think they have a better chance of making the playoffs than they do having like the number one or top three pick. Right. It's not impossible. Um, Trevor Lawrence is him. He is him. And (laughs) Doug Peterson is him. How casual he is him. (laughs) True. Um, it's just about how quickly it all comes together for the Jaguars. Uh, but I do think they'll take care of business in week one because they're going to have wrinkles um, that, that no one's seen yet, in my opinion. And, of course, I think Scott Turner is a very good offensive coordinator for the, the commanders. But um, overall, I'm just looking at – I like Doug Peterson a lot more than, than Ron Rivera. And no, no shade against Ron, Ron Rivera. He's done a lot of good things in the NFL. But uh, I'll take our head coach, and I will take Trevor Lawrence. Um, and the rest of the rosters, I think, are on the same page enough to where the Jaguars are going to take that one. So you think the Jags are going to be 2-0 and because we're not even going to ask questions about Colts at home? Right. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'll definitely give them the first one. And obviously, the Colts haven't won in Jacksonville since 2014, so – Will Matt Ryan break that streak? I don't know. Who are the Colts playing in week one? I don't remember. I have no idea. Let me check. All I know is Matt Ryan did not look great in his preseason action last weekend. Colts fans got mad at me when I said he did not look good. Oh, they play the Texans week one. Okay. 
That's a sneaky. The they're Texans be, people people like to shit Houston. on them, but they're not. They're, they're not that. Houston. They're not a. Their roster is not bad. Like it's not terrible. I think the Texans are going to be like last year's Lions. Maybe get like six wins and surprise people. Yeah. You a Davis Mills guy? I'm a Davis okay. Mills is a confident starter guy. I yeah. would agree. I'm about that. I, I don't think, think he's ever going to be a guy where he can like elevate his football team uh, when he becomes more of a veteran. But if you have good pieces around him, you run the football, you play defense. Yeah. Davis Mills can be a quarterback for a playoff team down the road, I think. All right. Last question. As a Gators fan and a draft analysis guy, we both are Anthony Richardson thoughts. <laughs> I mean, you just got to see more. He's got what do you everything. think he's going to do? How do you, do you think he's going to be good? Um, yeah, I do. I like, I like Anthony Richardson. I think he's going to be very good. Um, it's hard. It's, I'm more jaded about the Gators than the Jaguars because like, I really dive deep into the Jack. Like I cover the Jaguars, right? Yeah. The Gators, I'm more of just a fan, a casual, right? So it's like harder for me to be like, yeah, this Gators quarterback is going to be really good. But, um, you know, all the physical tools are there. I think, he has it within him to do it. Uh, I think he'll. I think he'll have a good year. I think he'll eventually, probably push himself into being a first round pick. My thoughts are he should go no lower than the third round since Malik Willis went in the third round. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that right now. I agree. I don't. Because all I'll say <laughs> is is if I have to see somebody call him Cam Newton two point again, I'm going to shoot myself in the face. He's not Cam. <laughs> He's, there's Cam was like one of one in college. Let's just say Cam that. was one of one. I do think that Richardson has similar he has the skill potential set. to be better than Cam Newton was in the NFL. As yes, a I would agree. Yeah, I, I, agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Two there different games, but in college, passing. Cam was one of one. <laughs> Absolutely, legend. All right, thank you for coming on the podcast. Him, sorry, I remember seeing him doing bull in the ring with the linebackers, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> This Cam guy Newton? Is built different. Yeah, at Florida. Dude, look at that roster. If he didn't he steal took to the a Nat- laptop. Jeez, yeah. Look at that roster he took to the Natty, and there's like nobody on that yeah. offense that did anything. <laughs> Crazy. I'm sick. If he didn't steal a laptop, <laughs> we'd be the da- we'd be the Alabama. Nope. Anyways, thanks for thanks for coming on the podcast, man. It was great. Thank yeah, you guys so it, much for having me. Keep it up. Keep doing a good job. I really appreciate y'all and uh, all the interactions we have. So <laughs> yeah, no let's problem. do it again soon. Hey, make right. sure everybody follows Jordan DeLugo at Jordan DeLugo. Yep. Follow should, at his, Generation Jaguar, his YouTube it should channel. Be below right we'll here. have it all in the description and everything. Yep. Oh, yeah, guys. Have, have a good weekend. You too. Hey, you too, man. Adios. All right, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that inter- well, interview guest appearance by Jordan. Hope you guys enjoyed the Deshaun interview. Hope you guys enjoyed this whole podcast. We're happy to be back and back in action every week. Uh, a little bit of wiggle room these next couple of weeks because Sean will be having another child. So give us some slack there. But other than that, we should be here every single week because I, I don't I don't have to leave my room if I don't want to. I and also, here. look out for some giveaways. We're going to be doing, I bought some football cards. I got a couple, two autograph cards. I'm not going to spoil who they are, but I'm just going to be like auctioning them off. Not auctioning them off, but doing giveaways. Most most of them free. I think the autograph cards, I might do like like bids or, you know, like a dollar to get you in. I don't know. I'm, I'm still working that part out. I might just do it all for free and just do trying to, you know, get some viewership, other teams, you know, see how that goes out. Yeah, guys, so that's an incentive to watch every podcast fully through because giveaways won't just be at the end. They might literally be in the middle of a podcast. You'll never know. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. We're glad to be back, and we'll catch you guys next time. Make sure to follow our Twitters. Everything's up there, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.